In this video, we're going to take the project that we just created and we're going to put it into Git. So I just wanted to kind of separate the videos out just a little bit in case uh, people are already familiar with this stuff. But if you're not familiar with Git and you have source tree installed, I highly recommend that you follow through with this. Okay, so we see we have our path to our project here in our file system. I'm going to go ahead and open up source tree, which is going to open up on one of my monitors somewhere, maybe. <laughs> I think it ran away from me. I actually seriously think, because I saw it for like a second on one of my monitors and it disappeared. And then it bolted? Yeah. I, like, I think it knows that I'm not a big fan of it. <laughs> oh, I already had it open. That's why. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Okay. So, we have Source Tree. I'm going to take this path right here and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to open up Source Tree. I'm going to go to clone slash new. Uh, the clone is the terminology for when you're pulling down an existing Git repository. So for example, if you're wanting to work on an open source project, you'd clone it. But we're going to create a new one. So that's where the slash new comes in. Um, we're going to go to create new repository. We're going to say repository type Git. Obviously, that's the one we're using. Destination path. I'm going to paste my path. And we see that it'll automatically bookmark the repository in our little bookmarks. And that's all we need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Create. Now look what happens. You'll see if we go back into uh, Explorer, we now have our Git folder, which means this is now a Git repository. And if we go back into our source tree, we see that we have all the files. of wow. our project. That's a lot of files already. So Steve, what's wrong with this picture? Um, everything's in working copy and none of it's actually been committed or anything yet. That is a problem. But we have a bunch of, or maybe maybe you didn't, yeah, I never really talked about temporary files, did I? <laughs> no. Um, you tricked me. I did trick you. <laughs> Do you feel tricked? Yes, I do. Okay, it worked. Um, we have a bunch of files in here we don't want to commit to our repository. Namely, all of this resharper stuff. This is all temporary local resharper stuff we don't want. We have our everything in our bin folder, our OBJ folder. None of that we want committed because these are all res the result of building our project. We really Ooh. only want our source code committed. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this where you talked about that uh, ignore file? So what we need to do is we need to get ignore file. So I'm going to come back in here and I wonder, actually, I don't know, but I wonder if there is a button to create a get ignore file. It wouldn't surprise me if there was. Eh. Ignore? Where? Halfway down. Oh, I think that'll ignore the, my currently selected. Yeah, I think that's oh, okay. Okay, so I'm just going to do the stupid the thing that's gross yeah well, I'm just going to go new text document blah dot text I'm going to open up a PowerShell I hate this so much I swear there's probably a much more convenient way to do this and a person like watching this video probably knows that there is and they're sitting there laughing at me like <laughs> opening up a PowerShell window just so I can name a file dot get ignore I think you're paranoid but okay yeah. anyway so I'm going to say move text Actually, um, I'm going to do the move command, not MV. MV is, only works with PowerShell, but move works with... Um, actually, I think it's rename. Is it move? Let's find out. It's move. Okay. Okay, so what I've effectively done is I've created a git ignore. If you didn't watch the, the introduction to git, um, uh, you, you, or if you did, you would know that we uh, can't create in Windows a file called .git ignore from Explorer. So that's why I have to go through this little song and dance. Okay, so now I'm going to open up my git ignore, and I'm going to type in some stuff. Now, I highly recommend that you go online and you find a Visual Studio git ignore file somewhere, but I want this to be a little bit explicit for people who might be new to this, or who might be new to the temporary files that Visual Studio makes. So let's start off with our bin folders. We don't want our bin folders. We don't want our OBJ folders. Those are our object folders that contain temporary compilation um, files. We don't want our 
S, uh, what is it, SUO files. Those are temporary Visual Studio files. We don't want our user files. Those are user specific uh, properties. We don't want our sln.doc states files. Those are again user specific. We don't want our debugger release files. I'm going to use a bit of uh, regular expressions here um, or a, a pattern matching syntax to do both whoops, uppercase and lowercase debug and uppercase and lowercase release. That is the syntax if you want to do that. Does that make sense? Okay, so next up we're going to ignore our obj files dot obj. Then we're going to ignore our pdb files, which is which are our debug symbols. We don't need those. Next up, we're going to ignore the entire resharper folder and any variation of resharper. And just for those out there, I accidentally bumped my mute thing. Uh, the debug and release was just so it would recognize either upper or lower case, right? Yes. Okay. I wasn't just silent because I was boggled. Okay. I, I thought you might have like died or something. So. <laughs> well, yeah. A Instead of calling your house phone, I just continued the recording. I was going to do that after. <laughs> we'll check on him later. But um, anyway, so we need our we need our resharper folder ignored uh, because that uh, um, that's obviously going to contain a bunch of uh, local stuff that's specific to our user. Notice how I say underscore resharper star. That's because um, resharper has a it's resharper dot project name. So I want to ignore everything. Okay. Next up, we want to get rid of that stupid thumbs.db file, which uh, Explorer creates for caching thumbnails. And we want to get rid of any desktop.ini file that find, found its way into our project. So now that I've done that, I'm going to close this out and hit save. And we now have a git ignore. So jumping back into SmartKit, or <laughs> source tree, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to commit the git ignore. So I'm going to click on it, I'm going to stage it, then I'm going to commit it, and my message is going to be committed ignore file. And then I'm going to hit commit. By doing that, we see that all of the files that we wanted to ignore are now gone. The, these are the only files in our project that we have that we want to commit our solution, all of our CS files, our ASACS file, our CS proj file, our web config files, and our packages config. The additional ones down here, these are the NuGet packages um, that we want to commit to our repository. There is a more advanced thing called NuGet package restore, which is really neat, but we're not going to be talking about this that in this video series. So this constitutes our entire initial commit. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit control A I guess, or no, I'm not. I'm going to go up. Come on. I'm going to go up to um, add or. You want commit all, right? Yeah, commit all. That's yeah. the one I found earlier. OK. Sorry about that. I, it, you, you might tell by the fact that I keep on accidentally calling this program SmartKit. I, I'm mostly a SmartKit user. Um, anyway, so we have our initial commit. This is a perfectly valid commit message in this particular instance because all we have done is created the project from a template. And I highly encourage people to commit immediately after creating their project from a template. So that's why this isn't a very descriptive message because, well, we haven't really done anything yet. By the way, initial has two I's before and after the T. Sorry. You told me. That means every single repository I've ever created has been misspelled for the last, <laughs> like, what, um, six years? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, now I feel bad. Okay, now it says uh, the content of the following files will be added to version control. That's exactly what we want it to do, so we hit OK. Now our working copy changes and our stage changes are empty. But if I go into log slash history, we see that our initial commit did indeed include all of these files we wanted and none of the files we don't want. Nice. So now we are up and running in Git. 
And so all of those files are now stored in this little repository. And if you created a, uh, um, you went to bitbucket.com or github.com um, or unfuddle.com, you could create a repository on those sites and actually push this code to one of those services now that it's in source control. If you wanted to share it for whatever reason. But anyway, so that's a quick introduction to getting this set up with Git and creating our ignore file. Um, and I think that just about wraps this video up. Cool.